Okay, today I'd like to talk to you about a global topic which is called transhumanism. And all transhumanism is, is the definition is to transcend our limitations. So we're going to discuss a little bit about the global effect on us about transhumanism and how it's going to affect us possibly in the future. Related to that, we're going to see how the limits of our reach or how we limit our reach affects our health and our well-being. So today I'm going to explain that to you by when I was in Mount Zion National Park, I fell down a cliff and shattered my plexiglass or my elbow and it required a plexiglass elbow replacement. Okay, so in a way I'm transhumanist in that I need to have a new addition into my body to be able to move forward tomorrow. And the previous time in history, actually, somebody who would, that would have happened to, they would have probably looked at it, saw like the damage, the blood, probably cut it off, and I'd be standing here with like this to talk to you. So fortunately, because we have modern technology and some of these things going on, and you see it now, if anybody saw uh, Dancing with the Stars, you had that one dancer who has these legs that she lost, and she's an Olympic athlete. Okay, so that's transhumanism, the ability to transcend our limitations and whatever they are moving forward. So what I want to tell you about my elbow is that when I had this injury, it was about a week before I was supposed to go to a one month training event where I was going to learn how to facilitate healing and teach people healing techniques. So I said, oh yeah, I'm not going to be able to do any massage, I'm not going to be able to do any yoga, it's like I may as well you know, cancel on this and then talk to the guy in the telephone and says, there's no better place to heal than this, so why don't you come? And I said, okay, I'll go. So I get there, and I was so happy I did, because I found another individual who had the same injury and had a plucked glass elbow. So we you know, had something to share and discuss, and it was like amazing to hear that she actually had the same injury. And she told me that one of the things she had done is she limited her range of motion. One of the things about being healthy is that if you do a full range of motion, I'm going to be able to keep that range of motion. If I start doing this all day long and don't do anything else, after a while that range of motion in my shoulder becomes limited. So it was the same thing for my elbow. I started doing, like actually I was walking with my hands and putting in water and sun and out of the cast and doing all the things the doctor tells you not to do. But then I, like about two weeks into it, I go to the doctor and he's there, is the x-ray in this the right date? Because he couldn't believe. He looked at my elbow and I was already walking with my hands by that time. And I had done full extension. So the water, the healing, and then people would like come up to me and I'd do lay hands on healing with me. So I'm like a firm believer on the exchange of energy because we're energy beings. And when you get the right amount of energy, it's amazing what you can do in the physical body and to your health. Anyway, what's important is for you to understand is range of motion. So a simple effect of that is like, for right now I just close my eyes and just take a deep breath and smile big. It's like range of motion, it's called a breath of joy. Just the act of smiling makes you happy. It physically changes you from a mood of whatever you are in into a greater state of well-being because it's a natural response to the physical smile. So there are little things like that. Now where this comes into transhumanism is that right now the world is at a place where we know there's like something <coughs> big happening because there's so many things politically, economically, environmentally. But what we believe with transhumanism is that we are co-creators in it. That right now we're learning biologically how to change lifespan to like who knows what limitations. That we actually know beings on earth who have transcended the limitation of aging and we can get into our biological clocks and change our cellular growth and a, a range of things. If I lose a limb, I can put on a mechanical limb or even a bioorganic limb. So the possibilities that we're at, we're on the edge of what we call a global golden age. So when we get out of the bad stuff that we're in right now, which we do have to, and the chaos comes before a reorganization, we believe that what is going to occur is that we're going to reorganize co-creatively with ourselves and, of course, in the greater spiritual beings in, of nature. Not to say that we're going to just all become man-machine type of thing, but we will do some of that, but we will also understand our spiritual nature in greater ways and the exchange of energy and how we relate in our physical being to our energy bodies and to adding like plexiglass into my body if I need it, that type of thing. How just breathing affects your health and your well-being. That they know that if you have some kind of disability in your body and you add oxygen to your body, you are going to 
be healthier because it's going to boost your immune system and help and promote the healing. So if you intentionally focus on your breathing once in a while, just breathe deeper, do something aerobically. If you do yoga or some kind of physical exercise, what you're doing is you're massaging your internal organs. When you massage your internal organs, they're healthy because what occurs is that you stimulate blood flow and that increased oxygen into your body. So something, but most of us have lots of eye problems. So I do this simple eye exercise where I just do a breathing first of all, breath of joy. And I breathe that breath. And then I do a simple eye exercise where I stretch my eyes because all day I'm doing a limited range of motion and that's adversely affecting my eyes. So I basically create a star pattern. And then I do counter-rotating circles following it. And then I look out to my finger, I look to my nose, and then I look open sphere. What that does is stretching my eye axis is just like if I did this all day, which is what I'm doing with the computer. I'm like looking like this all day long. So because I do that, my eyes are actually going to start having problems. And your, your prescription, your glasses may be needed, or you may need to add glasses to uh, be able to read. But adding those eye exercises, they actually found out that some people are able to actually eliminate wearing glasses just by doing it because <coughs> most of their problem is actually musc intramuscular, really not optical. You know, there's different kinds of damage in your eye, but if it's intramuscular and you add the muscular strength and health back into your eye, some people actually eliminate glasses completely by doing that. So there's a range of possibilities with this global transhumanism. First of all, it starts with keeping your range of motion up for your own health and well-being, adding additional oxygen into your body, doing the aerobics that you need, and then keeping your range of motion, whatever way you do that, sports, dancing, playing, having fun, and smiling, you know, breathing and smiling. So to your health and well-being, I uh, wish you all that you see transhumanism as that transcending our limitations is like an acorn. We're acorns right now as human beings, and we're gonna go into trees that we have no idea what that means right now. We're gonna go, go into some kind of vast tree that's effective, and we don't know exactly what that is, but we're an acorn right now. The tree's growing. Thank you.